Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging with these nerds. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. And we delve back into Dark Sun and the 10 reasons why 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons needs it with the player races that were added by Athos. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So our series into why 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons needs Dark Sun continues, and this time we're going to talk about new races that were introduced only in Dark Sun. Indeed. The, the, there's a number of races that are very thematic and aren't really seen anywhere else or were seen here first. Uh, so my favorite of them was the Mull. Right. Oh, let's clarify too. Player races. Okay. Several of them showed up as monsters. Yeah. Right. So f first in my mind was the Mull, as I pronounce it, but everybody else called it the Mule. Uh, and this is the, the race that is a... Um, Half dwarves. Uh, yeah, half dwarf. It's it's a sterile race from humans and dwarves, and they're completely hairless. But they're, you know, they're they're bred as soldiers, as slaves, and it's. Well, that's the other thing that kind of makes them interesting. They were specifically bred, right? Sentient creatures, uh, were basically turned made into slaves and forced to breed so that it, so that, you know, those in power could literally make a specific type of race that they could use. For like you said, soldiers and slaves, right? And he did a really good job at it, by the way. <laughs> and you know, they're they were prized because they they were possessed of you know this this workman's fortitude that they could go you know thirty six hours, forty eight hours without needing any rest or food or water, and in a world as brutal as Athos, like oh well, this is perfect. Yeah, literally one of their traits was you know, you know, their ungodly endurance, where literally there was a chart what activities they could they could do for how long, and it was ridiculous because some of those activities went into days. Yes. You know, without sleep. So uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Obviously, you know, they had high constitutions, they had high strengths, they made excellent soldiers and warriors, gladiators, and, and all, you know, all around. But unfortunately, the downside to being a mole is more than likely, likely you're a slave. Absolutely. Now, now, if we want to jump to another, you know, uh, thematic race, uh, it wasn't seen anywhere else, and I don't think it's any, it's, it's it's warped and twisted into other worlds uh, or into other settings. But we have the half giant. Correct. The, your your Goliath, and later on half giants. They all got their start start in Dark Sun. The, you couldn't find them anywhere else, and I think there was only three races that were introduced uh, as player races, like in the core books, anyway. Mm -hmm. That were like that. There were some ever, some several other ones that you could find elsewhere, but they just you know just not as player races. Yeah, right. the half giants were ridiculously strong and tough, and uh, uh, well, they also with being really super large. Unfortunately, they needed a lot of water. The, yeah, that was a downside. <laughs> what, and they also introduced a really interesting and fun mechanic with the half giants. They had this thing where they would latch on the people. And when they did, they would take on one aspect of their alignment. So one aspect of the half giant's alignment changed every day, pretty much, Dep or you know, from circumstance to circumstance, depending on who they kind of like bond it with. Who, who, who they were, who were they were going to be close friends with today, uh, because they they were not possessed of you know the great mental aptitude that many other races were. So it's like, well, they they re really relied on other people to kind of have some kind of grounding. Maybe. I don't know if it's their ma mental aptitude or just their chameleon-like ability to kind of, like, socially blend in, you know, did, when they would do that. But it was always, like, one part of their alignment was static, and then the rest of it would just kind of, like, shift up and down the spectrum. They definitely needed to socially blend in because they weren't blending in physically no. <laughs> with anybody. Well, and that's true. <laughs> and so the hallmarks of the half-giant really were kind of being big, dumb brutes, you know, pretty much. They were awesome for physical labor. They were probably, you know, they were great for combat. Maybe not so so good for the fine details. But they were also very prevalent in Dark Sun. And many of the Sorcerer Kings used them as soldiers. Yeah, super intimidating as door guards. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So now if we're going to jump from one end of the spectrum to needing a lot of water, let's jump to the other end where the Thrycreen need, needed like, you know, so much less water than every, every other race in the game. Yeah. They, they, they measured their water intake, I think, in week, like per week rather yes. than per day, like everybody else. 
They, yeah, they were physically adapted to Dark Sun like no other race, pretty much. Now, we, we haven't really delved much into the, the physical, and not, not many people are aware of what the, the Thrykreen is, but they're literally, you know, four-armed mantis people. They, they're, they're giant bugs, and in a desert, they just thrived. Yeah, they're wingless as well, uh, but... Originally, they were supposed to have had wings back in the day when Athos was supposed to be a nice, happy, alive planet. <laughs> when it was verdant. Yeah, verdant and island and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the yeah, Thrycreen actually first appeared in Monster Manual 2. I always loved them as a monster race. Mm -hmm. And then in when it came to Dark Sun, they actually let you play them. And guess what? You pretty much got all their abilities. They were disgustingly sick compared to the other races. They got extra attacks. They had special weapons that only they can use, the Gith Githka and... Chachka. And Chachka's, which they, you know, one was like basically the, the throw, big giant throwing stars, and the other one was a polearm weapon. Well, it, was the, it was the first double weapon, really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I remember, anyway. Well, that probably might be debatable. I think there were double weapons before. Like, the quarterstaff is technically a double weapon. Okay. Like, right. It was never statted as a double weapon true. in AD&D. &D. True. Oh, they didn't get two attacks with it? Huh. They got extra attacks, but it was just because they were they, threat Because they were threat creed. Yeah, because well, they had four <laughs> arms. You know, they had psionic powers. I mean, everybody pretty much does. <laughs> but they had, they racially had specific ones that they got. They could deflect and catch missile weapons like a monk. Yep. Uh, and they could jump really far. Yeah, they had like this crazy jumping ability. Is literally they could they from standing still they could jump thirty feet straight out. Like insectoid ninjas, basically. Yeah, and <laughs> you would be wanted to be really careful kissing them because they were poisonous. So. In case, you know, you guys want to be... You guess, you guess there's any bug kissers out there. So, like, if, if you had... If you had uh, four chakchas, which were your throwing stars, and you could use them in ranged or melee, you could literally get up as a low-level character. Because they started... As these Dark Sun started at, th at third level. You could not play a first-level character. Uh, the dangers out there were just too rough. Like, you could go in and with five attacks. You know, you know stab, 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 bite. <laughs> Yeah, they were pretty ridiculous, and uh, and also they had some weird things with them as well, where basically no matter what your alignment was to your clutch, or what you considered your clutch, you're basically lawful good, even if you're chaotic evil, so they definitely had a different view, you know, they had no problem with eating elves and halflings, I think they preferred them. Yeah, that was their preferred diet. Yeah, so, you know, so, so they t tended to not get along with those as well. Well, Although, you know, halflings the, were eating everybody, too, so... <laughs> <laughs> they would get along fine with them, it's just that the other races didn't didn't like being eaten. Well, there's that, too. <laughs> and if you one of them were in your, in your party and happened to fall, I mean, it might be like, well, they're not doing anything with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and elves were jerks to everybody anyway, so... Well, it's their superpower. <laughs> Some things about certain races never change. Never change. <laughs> just they just transform into different types of jerks. Yeah, so the Thry Thrykin was a super thematic. It would be uh, th that would be one of the challenging races to bring into fifth edition and balance. But hey, I got confidence in you guys. Uh, so that make it so <laughs> make it so, and that, so that brings us to the Terrans. The Terrans, and you know, we could go into you know a, a lot of the the history and things that are going on with Terrans, but they really are desert lizard folk. That, that that's where they that's where they switch to, and you know they don't look like the lizard, lizard folk that's in your monster manual, but they they look like they're descendants of pterodactyls pretty yeah. much, wingless pterodactyls though, right? You know they 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 got rid of their their wings so that they could have these wonderful things called fingers, because everyone knows you cannot drink a, lift a coffee mug with a wing. <laughs> So you know the 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 last last race that was kind of introduced as a player race, for or a unique player race within Athis and and Dark Sun, and that's the Arakokra. And uh, the Arakokra too in Dark Sun. That's what I believe where they really got more of that buzzard, um, that buzzard appearance, that vulture appearance mm -hmm. than an eagle or hawk. They were far less regal looking. Right, and like. I never, like, visually, I never liked any of the old, you know, buzzard ap appearance of them. So I would always shy shy away. You know, now the Arakoka looks so much cooler. And I'm like, yeah, I could see myself playing one of those. If you say so, Ted, if you say so. I like the old one way better. It was more It was more interesting. I don't like the Hawkman Arakoka, personally. Uh, I did, I really dug thematically the... Uh, the Dark Sun version because it just it just felt like a a a, a uh, 
a, you know, a grittier, dirtier race. Well, it had more yeah. character. It to felt it. more like Dark Sun. It, it felt more like Dark Sun. In, in Dark Sun, that that's that's typically how they have to look. You can't you can't have this clean, white, pristine set of feathers in Dark Sun. That's just not. It's not far fit. too much dust for that. Absolutely. Maybe every arrow croaker is actually clean underneath, and they're all just like dirty and stuff. Uh, then when they shake it out, yeah, and they shake it all out, and if they ever got a hold enough of water to take a water bath. <laughs> Oh no! You'd be blinded by the light. So Arakoker were were pretty cool, and you know they they actually retained their flight and uh, yeah, they had their flight basically prehensile feet. They could use their feet as if they were hands. You you know they like most birds they had exceptional vision. Uh, you know they had natural natural weapons, which we have only really kind of touched on you know briefly with the. You know, with the Thrycreen, even we didn't, we didn't bring up the fact that they could use their, they had claws, they didn't right. have to use weapons. Right. And in Dark Sun, having natural weapons is a big deal because there is no steel, there's no metal. So most of the weapons you have are going to be cruddy anyway. So having natural weapons, in some cases, are as good or better than the weapons you're going to get, get your hands on anyway. Absolutely. So the, the you know, the, the thing that was a standard tactic for Arakokra uh, would be ranged, ranged weapons. So that they would they would fly and they could use their feet to actually draw their draw their bows or use their bows, and like all right, I'm up here flying, you can't get me. And... Or use javelins. They use javelins a lot of times, and they also had a special attack called dive bombing. Like they would literally dive at you, and it was a special charge attack that only our crocus could do. You know, they'd have to go up into the air, and they would do extra damage. So you know, so again, it's another one of the cool the cool races. In Dark Sun that you could play, and that's not even getting into the reimagined, re-envisioned races that you know from other worlds. So the question is, do you or did you play Dark Sun? You know, what what did you feel about these awesome new races that that Athos and Dark Sun brought to the gaming table? Why don't you share share your thoughts and your stories down in the comments below? While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can always patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. And check out funny memes over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.